For analysis, we're joined by Xu Chengdu, Senior Fellow at the Pangol Institution. He's also a political analyst with China Radio International. Good to see you there. So how much is this gathering in Tajikistan building on what happened at the SCO summit in June? You know, free trade has been a big topic there, but also they're discussing a possible SCO free trade zone. Well, that's right. Uh, there are some general framework uh, pr proposed at uh, the Shanghai Cooperation Summit meeting in June in Shanghai, uh, in Qingdao, actually. And of course, uh, uh, you, you see, uh, if you take a look, listen at the uh, Chinese Premier's uh, speech at the meeting, it's about uh, a cooperation. In general, you can describe them as a two wheels uh, strategy. On one hand, you have this uh, traditional cooperation. It's about uh, security. It's about the peace and stability. It's not then about the separatism, extremism, and terrorism. That's a traditional fight against those uh, forces. And also, there is a fight, joint fight, against the drug trafficking across borders in this region. Uh, so that's about stability. And also, you have uh, radical fighters coming back, probably from uh, uh, Syria, uh, with the uh, stabilization uh, situation over there. Uh, so this is uh, still remains a severe challenge. And uh, another view would be the uh, economic and trade cooperation. That's about uh, investment. It's about uh, uh, like uh, the feasibility study of a free trade deal uh, among these members. I think this is against a larger background of the rise of protectionism, the rise of unilateralism. So there's an urgent need for regional groups to form uh, also regional trade groups uh, to facilitate trade among those uh, nations. Uh, so this is, uh, I, I guess, it's a lot more outstanding issue for these countries now. We know that the Belt and Road Initiative is a part of this infrastructure, a key part of the SEO as well. But member countries are also wanting to cooperate in things like innovation, the digital economy, and clean energy, just to name a few. So could we see this priority move into the future, this digital economy, innovation, those sort of things? Yes, I think it's uh, at the two levels. On one hand, it's about e-commerce. Uh, we know China is in the uh, very advanced position in terms of e-commerce. Uh, Chinese consumers benefit a lot. Chinese business benefit a lot from uh, you know, the means of like e-commerce. I think other countries, I think China obviously is trying to introduce the idea to other countries, you know. Uh, in that way, uh, you could see a, a fastened um, integration of uh, businesses uh, uh, within, uh, you know, the border of a, a sovereign country and within the SSEO framework among these nations. Uh, so by doing e-commerce, so to facilitate the transfer of goods and services across borders. And at the, a higher level, it's really about uh, advanced technologies, uh, innovation, uh, for example, like uh, robotics, uh, uh, artificial uh, intelligence. I think China, obviously, you know, with the US, are the two nations in the leading position. Of course, within the SSEO group, I think China can play uh, a, you know, a larger role, actually, to uh, share this technology, uh, to share the Chinese investment uh, in this region, because this is uh, uh, forward-looking. This is uh, going beyond infrastructure, going beyond uh, the you know routine, more ordinary investment, uh, uh, trade of services. Uh, it's about looking into the future, future cooperation among SSU members. We know that this is Premier Li's first visit to Tajikistan. How would you describe ties between these two neighbors? Um, historically, these two nations, they have no historical issues, they have no territorial uh, disputes. So uh, in general, the relationship is very stable. And both nations uh, have their own problems of, uh, uh, for example, extremism, terrorism. Uh, on, in this area, the cooperation is a common goal, basically, to maintain peace and stability. They are neighboring countries, so that's very important for both nations. Uh, secondly, if you look at the uh, pragmatic cooperation, for example, infrastructure and the investment, uh, in particular in Tajikistan, from the Chinese side, so, in, I mean, uh, people in Tajikistan benefit a lot from this investment. Uh, of course, this is, will be a win-win uh, cooperation. The Chinese side will also benefit from from a stable, a growing market in Tajikistan. Uh, so a bilateral relationship, but I do see uh, more and more uh, robust cooperation. For example, when, when it comes to learning Chinese, besides Confucius Institute in this country, uh, the second uh, 
a choice, a second destination for uh, young Tajikistan, uh, Tajiks um, to learn the language is actually Chinese. Uh, China is a second destination for them after Russia uh, to go overseas to study uh, either language or other subjects over there. All right, Xu Chengdu, always great to hear your insight. Thank you for joining us from Beijing. Pleasure.